my opinion, but opinions matter. Less than one month before White Bear Lake's elections last fall. We got no parking. And they're trying to put Terry Kellerman, owner of Kellerman's Event Center and The Alchemist, opened his doors to host a public forum discussing the Purple Line Rapid Transit bus project. And opinions were rolling fast and furious. It's time to take the port out of this pig, the rush line. With over 200 attendees, those who spoke voiced opposition for the line to move forward. But a resolution to pause the project brought before the council in November failed to pass. Council members Bean? Aye. Angstrand? Nay. Walsh? No. Edberg? Aye. The motion fails. Ramsey County Commissioner Victoria Reinhardt, a staunch supporter of the line, formerly called the Rush Line, says at this point really a pause is not possible. Uh, because this is now in the federal process. It's no longer at the local level. The No Rush Coalition, a group of concerned citizens led by longtime White Bear Lake resident Tim David, says they have many concerns. The 15-mile route will run from St. Paul's Union Depot to White Bear Lake where 89 buses will run down Highway 61 each weekday. David says the group doesn't believe the ridership is there. In the aftermath of the pandemic, ridership has fallen by 60% on local bus routes and 95% on express bus routes, according to the Met Council. In Route 265, which made eight stops in White Bear Lake, was discontinued in 2020. Results from a ridership study by the University of Minnesota are due to the legislature early next year. We will, we're looking forward to an objective analysis by the University of Minnesota and our others to determine what the design should be before they go too far. We certainly don't want them uh, putting in infrastructure before they can confirm what those real ridership numbers would look like. Commissioner Reinhardt says ridership assessment is part of a rigorous process at the federal level, which will be addressed and believes it would be unfortunate for White Bear Lake not to benefit from the line if city leaders vote against it. We do have a viable project even without White Bear Lake. Um, I think that it would be a shame uh, because of all of the things that would not happen in White Bear Lake. Plus, people talk about the fact that we want to go further north. Well, if you can't get to White Bear Lake, you can't get to Hugo, you can't get to Forest Lake, and that's part of this system. I mean, our taxpayers are going to pay it anyway. Why wouldn't they um, want to get the benefit of it? But paying is what opponents are concerned about. The Purple Line is projected to cost $475 million, with about $237 million being paid through federal funding and Ramsey County paying the rest. But people are worried that number may increase, citing the Southwest Line, which added another 450 to 550 million dollars to its two billion dollar price tag. It's something that we don't want and we don't need and that money is huge money and obviously with the thing they got going down in the southern metro down there, the some of the press is calling it a boondoggle and Opponents are also concerned about the loss of parking, the influx of traffic on 61 and disruption of the Bruce Vento Trail, but Commissioner Reinhardt says the buses will add little to the traffic and the trail will be improved. Not only will the Bruce Vento Trail not be destroyed, it will actually be enhanced. It will have smoother pavement, it will have native plantings, it will have um, all kinds of attributes that aren't currently there right now. Of the 103 businesses we've talked to, 100 of those businesses oppose it and have offered to put signs in their windows and or sign our petition. So that's pretty significant. And David says nearly all of the businesses the coalition has approached from Maplewood to White Bear Lake oppose the line, but not all do. Like no, you shouldn't. Coalition. Dale Graham Bush, a farmer's insurance agent operating in downtown for 30 years, sees the line as an opportunity. Public transportation is important to a community because it helps bring, bring people into the community it also helps bring people who live in the community a chance to, if they don't have a vehicle or maybe don't want to have a vehicle, uh, a way to still get around town. He also believes ridership numbers will come back and thinks BRT riders may bring business to the downtown. Construction may begin as early as 2024. The No Rush Coalition is open to alternatives and invested business owners like Kellerman hope it's not too late to put the brakes 
on the process. I mean, if you're giving somebody something that they don't want and don't need and spending a bunch of their money to do it, why?